You know, one of the things I hear a lot is that people don't really know what to make a video about. Well, an easy idea for a video is to visit your local cemetery and get to know some of the very interesting people that lived in your town before you, the interesting lives that they led, the problems that they faced. You can dig into that. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to introduce you to a very interesting person in one of the oldest cemeteries in Pulaski, Tennessee. General John Calvin Brown. John Calvin Brown was born in Giles County, Tennessee, the son of Duncan and Margaret Smith Brown, and he was also the younger brother of Neil Brown, who served as the governor of Tennessee in the late 1840s. John graduated from Jackson College in Columbia, Tennessee, which would actually be burned along with most of Columbia in the Civil War. He studied law with his uncle Hugh Brown and later was admitted to the bar. He began practicing law in Pulaski in 1848. Like his brother Neil, John would support the Whig Party up until its collapse before the American Civil War, and he would still support former Whig candidates up until the 1860 election when he served as an elector for the Constitution Union Party candidate, John Bell. Like John, he was opposed to secession and he took a neutral stance when it came to slavery. In the weeks that followed the Battle of Fort Sumter, secessionist fury swept Middle Tennessee, and he, along with his brother, and even eventually John Bell, would change sides and support the burgeoning Confederacy. War had come. In May of 1861, Brown enlisted as a private in the Confederate infantry and was elected colonel of the 3rd Tennessee shortly afterward. He was later placed in charge of a brigade consisting of three Tennessee regiments. Following the surrender of Fort Donaldson outside of Nashville, he was held as a prisoner of war for six months at Fort Warren, Massachusetts. And in 1862, he was exchanged. John Brown would see action at the Battle of Perryville, Chickamauga, the Battle of Missionary Ridge, the Atlanta Campaign, and the disastrous Battle of Franklin, where six of his fellow generals would die. He was incapacitated for several months and did not rejoin the Army until the end of the Carolinas Campaign in April of 1865. He surrendered with Joseph E. Johnson's forces at Bennett Place, and he was paroled a month later. Following the war, Brown returned to Pulaski and resumed his law practice, his original home here having been fully restored by the Brindley Company is now a part of the Martin Methodist College campus and it is used as offices by the college. Brown was elected to the Tennessee General Assembly in 1869 and in the following year he was a delegate to the State Constitutional Convention and was elected its president by his peers. This convention overhauled the state's 1834 constitution, essentially updating it to meet post-Civil War demands. And the document most notably guaranteed the right to vote to all males of at least 21 years of age, regardless of race. But it also instituted a poll tax. Although it has been amended a number of times, it remains Tennessee's current state constitution. Also in 1870, he would become the Democratic candidate for governor of Tennessee. With the new constitution and ex-Confederates now with the ability to vote again, he easily defeated his opponent. He would run for a second term in 1872 and would win again. In 1875, he, along with several other ex-Confederates, would run for a vacant Senate seat that would eventually go to former President Andrew Johnson. In the late 1870s, he would join the Texas Pacific Railroad, becoming its president in 1888. And in 1889, he would become president of the Tennessee Coal, Iron, and Railroad Company, which at that time was one of the largest industrial firms in the South. In 1889, he would also fall ill and would retreat to Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee, made famous by its mineral springs with their supposed healing abilities. However, on August the 17th of 1889, he would have a stomach hemorrhage and he would pass away at the age of just 62. His body would be returned to Pulaski and he would be buried here at Maplewood Cemetery. Uh, this impressive statue would be erected in his honor. And I love one of the things that's said on the side here. It goes over clearly what he was able to accomplish in his life. But I love this final saying. He was successful in every undertaking 
and faithful to every trust. Well, I don't think you can say too much better about a person. It's been my pleasure to tell you about General John Calvin Brown, former governor of Tennessee.